Alright, so I've actually been getting requests for a video, and it's a very specific video, and I should admit, I haven't been on my YouTube channel other than to very quickly upload that one video from Minecraft in quite a while. So, here it is. This is Mod Day 13, version 2, part 1. So, a lot of the complaints that I've been receiving on this one video, it's my most disliked video, is that it's hard to follow. And that's because I keep switching between the managers. So with this, I'm going to actually set some timestamps and I'm going to go completely through one manager and then switch to the next. I no longer have the setup for the video, so this is going to vary a little bit. I'm not going to go into the full details as it relates to the rest of the series because I don't think most of you are here for that. You're just here to learn how to install non-Nexus mods. So let's go ahead and do this. First of all, pick your mod. I'm using in this example Skyrim Realistic Overhaul. Then go ahead and download it. Of course, unfortunately the one I decide to pick is four different files because it's just a big mod where you download doesn't really matter too much. It's entirely up to you. But then I will show you a few more tips. So I'm going to pause the video here and come back in a moment. All right, so the files are now downloaded. And you can go ahead and depending on your browser, there's usually a show in folder icon. I recommend just using that to see where they've been downloaded to. It just makes it a whole lot easier. If it doesn't show that in your browser, Chances are you can still go to wherever your uh, file manager is, quick access, downloads, it's pinned right there, and that's probably where it was saved too. So I've got all four files here, and I'm gonna go ahead and start with Mod Organizer 2. How you're going to do this? There's a few ways. First of all, in MO2, you can go to the Downloads tab on the right, right, and uh, take the files that you've downloaded, drag them to there. It should show copy, and you drop them, and they're automatically copied to that folder, and then you can install them. That's really one of the simplest ways of doing it. Another option is you can go ahead and go to where that folder is manually. If you need to find it, it's in paths. The base directory is listed here, and as you can see, whenever I do that, I take that folder, put it here, exact same thing, and that takes me to the MO2 folder. Then the downloads directory, this includes the base directory up to the folder, and then it adds the downloads folder on top of that. You can go there and manually just drag from one window to the other. And that can be somewhat easier because then you don't have to deal with, oh, I've got two copies of the file now. Now I gotta delete one to save space. You can also hit the install a new mod from an archive button. This will pop this up. Then you can go to wherever that folder is that you downloaded the files to, double click the archive. This does take a few different options. The uh, 7-zip, FOMOD, RAR, ZIP, and that .001 is actually a 7-zip part archive. Then just install it like normal. Part one, and let's go ahead and just fix up this naming and hit OK. Alright so now I have all the parts installed and if this is just a regular install and you're not following the series in particular go ahead and just enable and it's now enabled. And now you have installed a mod that is not on Nexus using a mod manager. This is highly recommended for all mods, except for those explicit, explicitly stated in the mod description to install to the top level, not the data level, but the top level where the EXE is. For instance, SKSE and EMB. If you are continuing with the series, go ahead and go on to the second video, part two of uh, Mod Day 13, and I will show you how to use Cathedral Asset Optimizer in order to convert this to work properly with 
this load order that is in the series. If you are not, then you may skip that video. Thank you for watching, and this is the end of the MO2 version. Goodbye. Alright, so this is the second variation on how to install this. This is the Vortex version. So I'm going to show you how to use Vortex Mod Manager as opposed to MO2 to do this. It, it's basically the same thing. You might notice mine looks slightly different. The only real difference is that I moved the top bar to the top, or the sidebar to the top, and that's just how I usually use the mod manager. Ever since I made the mod, uh, everything else is basically the same, and just use it like it normal. So you can go ahead and go to the downloads tab, and you will have down here in the center bottom a drop section. It might be hidden. If so, there is in the bottom right a little arrow. Pop it up. And drag the files, the 7-zip archives. Do not right-click and extract. Just drag the 7-zip archives or the RAR, zip, or any other archive files that you got from the wherever you got the mod down to that drop there is the other option, you can go to the top and hit open folder. This is actually opening on a different window, so let's drag that over. And you can drag from the downloads folder that into the other downloads folder. From the source folder where you downloaded using your browser to the downloads folder the manager sees. Just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to drag into here. This will automatically start importing. Give it a few moments, and it should be able to install. All right, now all the files have been imported, and because I went ahead and drug multiple in at once, it merged the notification. But if you had only drug one at a time, it will only show install and dismiss, not install all, dismiss all, and three more. So in order to do this in the right order, you can go ahead and hit more and install them in the right order. One, two, three, update, or if you want to, you can go to the Mods tab, and they should show up there. So here they are at the top. First of all, they're from website. And the website that they're from is this one right here. Let's go ahead and grab that URL and put it in there. Alright, so currently there is a bug where you can put the URL into a source website and it does not save. I will note I am on the test version, so this might not be a bug by the time it is a full release, though I don't know for sure. So for now I'm just going to leave it as that. It's from website, models and textures, and you can go ahead and enable. All right, so figured something out. Apparently the bug with source website not being saved is only on archives. Doesn't matter too much. Hopefully it will be fixed before the full release. And you can set the version, the variant if you want to, and description as well. I'm not going to because I don't really need to. One thing I will note though is you're going to need to set the update after and hit OK, and that fixes that issue. If you are following the series rather than just this one video, go ahead and uh, hit deploy, and that's go. And then watch part two. In part two, I will actually be merging these four files and setting them into a ser series of BSA archives using Cathedral Asset Optimizer. It reduces the file size and increases the speed of the game. However, it is not required for this video, so I am removing it.